I invite you now to take a moment and with your smiles and your waves offer an Easter greeting to those around you. Good morning, one and all. Friends, I want to thank the RCSC for making this morning's service possible and for all the extra effort helping us get moved from the sun bowl to the sundial. A rainy Easter morning is not what any of us expect in the desert, and yet there was a great deal that was unexpected on that first Easter morning so long ago. Regardless of whether, where we gather on Easter or how we gather on Easter, we gather celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, please join with me as we take a moment of silence, centering our hearts, minds, and souls on the worship and praise of God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The tomb is empty. Jesus lives. The love of God prevails now and forevermore. So with joy and thanksgiving, let us worship the Lord together. For all who are able, I invite you to rise as we sing together our opening hymn, When Morning Gilds the Sky, as printed in the bulletin. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of John. It is chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, the resurrection of Jesus. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not 
lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord.
Friends, I do want to take a moment to say thank you to our talented United Church Choir, our amazing accompanist, Beverly Fletcher, our well-practiced page turner, Mr. Bill Zimmer, <laughs> and our tremendous minister of music, Alan Paulson, for helping to bring, bring all of this beautiful music to us this morning. Please join me in another round of applause if you will. I also want to thank our many volunteers from United Church for helping with this morning's service more than I can take time to name right now, but thank you all very much. And one more word of thanks to the RCSC for all they do to make this service possible. I invite us into a moment of prayer. Lord, your holy word is declared here this day, and we gather to celebrate it with music, with prayer, with preaching, and with fellowship. But we do none of this without your spirit in our midst. For your glorious presence blessing us now and always, we pray to you with grateful hearts. Amen. Well, it is obvious as we gather here this morning, our attention is drawn to a very important matter at hand. With it being March 31st, with this being Sun City, Arizona, and gathered together in this place, we cannot help but wonder, will the Diamondbacks return to the World Series? <laughs> yes! Baseball season is underway and hope springs eternal. The North American Baseball opening day was this past Thursday, and at this point in the season, everybody has a chance to be the next world champion, <laughs> except maybe the Washington Nationals, but that's for another sermon. <laughs> Speaking of baseball, there's a story about a wedding where several people had gathered to watch the blessed event. Suddenly during the vows, a man jumped up from his pew and yelled, yes, 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 pumping his fists into the air. Then he stopped, looked around, and he slowly slumped back down into his pew as he took out his earbuds. <laughs> it seems he had been listening to a baseball game and his favorite player had just hit a, a home run and it tied up the game. Well, I tell you that today because Easter is the day for us as Christians to pump our fists into the air and declare, yes, 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 let's try it. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Easter is all about yes. God says yes to raising Jesus from the dead. God says yes to continue to care for humanity and for all of creation. God says yes to the gift of new life, everything about Easter says yes. Well, almost. One exception would be yes to a rain-free Easter morning, but hey, rain in the desert is always needed. I've shared this story before about a six-year-old boy named David who was taking a walk one day with his grandmother. They decided to detour through a local cemetery. Stopping to read the tombstones, Grandma explained that the first date on the tombstone was the day the person was born, and the second date was the day the person had died. Why do some tombstones only have one date, little David asked. Because those people haven't died yet, his grandmother explained. David was obviously stunned by his grandmother's explanation because that night he couldn't stop talking about the excursion. Mom, he said with wide eyes, some of the people buried in that cemetery aren't even dead yet. <laughs> and little David is correct. Although it doesn't take a cemetery. How many people are dead in their current lives? How many of us have some part of our life that has died? A relationship that wasn't what it once was finances that we thought would last and they've dwindled the house we've loved for years that's in a 
needed state of repair? And how about our faith? Are we keeping our faith nurtured? Things have a way of changing in life and not always for the better. But do not fear. Easter is the day when God says there's another way. There's more to come. Your end is not my end. The dead ends we see are not endings for God. Easter is God's yes to new life. The word of the day is yes. Unfortunately, the word that gets used often is no. As children, we learn to say no long before yes. And as adults, we still like using that word. No, I won't go to that party because I don't have anything to wear. No, I don't want to try that new restaurant because I'm sure I won't like it. No, I'm not going to listen to ideas and opinions that are different than mine. No, no, no. We have a saying in the United Church of Christ, never place a period where God has placed a comma. God is still speaking. The origin behind that saying is from the late great comedian Gracie Allen. She died in 1964, 32 years before her husband, the late great comedian George Burns. Near the end of her life, Gracie had written a note to George and she said in that note, do not place a period where God has placed a comma. Besides for the tremendous meaning that note held for George Burns, that saying may have no better application than Easter Sunday. God has more to say. God has more to do. God is not done with us yet. God is saying yes to new life. Mary Magdalene could relate. John tells us that Mary went to the tomb early on the first day of the week while it was still dark and she saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and told them they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple head for the tomb. Both were running. The other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And Simon Peter came along behind him and went into the tomb. He saw linen wrappings and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, but the body was gone. The disciples end up returning to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. Of course she did. And as she stood, stood there, she saw the angel sitting where the body had been. They inquired about her weeping and she told them. That's when she turned and she saw a man standing there who also asked about her weeping. She thought it was the gardener and asked him to tell her where he may have taken the body. Then it happened. Jesus said her name, Mary, and she knew in that moment it was Jesus. He told her not to hold on to him and to go and tell the others what had happened and all that would be happening. So she went and she declared the good news. I have seen the Lord. Friends, that's a yes. Mary says yes to following Jesus' instruction and declaring the good news that she has seen the Lord. Sometime back, there was a humorous story in Reader's Digest. A retired pilot wrote to tell the magazine about an experience he had in the Navy. The pilot's plane was needing repair. The maintenance crew had worked favorously to repair it in time for an important flight. After the team announced the plane was ready to fly, the crew stood by while the pilot conducted a pre-flight inspection. As he reached behind an equipment box, though, the pilot cut his finger on the exposed end of a safety wire. The cut bled profusely. Sticking his head out of the plane to ask for a first aid kit, he noticed two crew members studying a small red pool beneath the aircraft. That's my blood, the pilot called out. Both 
faces immediately brightened. Oh, thank goodness, one of the maintenance team members yelled back, we thought it was hydraulic fluid. <laughs> Prince Jesus was left hanging on a cross. And it was his blood that poured out of his side. It was on that cross that he died. His body was taken from the cross to the tomb, and many thought that was the end, including Mary and others who cared so deeply for him. And so Mary went to the tomb early that Sunday morning, while it was still dark, to tend to the body, but it wasn't there. And today we know why. Because Jesus lives. Just as sure as we gather together in this place, Jesus lives. Death does not get the last word. God gets the last word. And that word for us today is yes. On this Easter Sunday morning, we celebrate God rolling away the stone, opening the gift of new life and offering that gift to each and every one of us. So yes, indeed. Jesus lives. Thanks be to God. And of course, go D backs. <laughs>
As we prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion, uh, it is in your bulletin, and I invite you to uh, respond in the bold print. Also, please know all are welcome at the table. In the Gospel of Luke, we read that Jesus at the table with two of his disciples took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, and their eyes were open, and they recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and praise your holy name. Through our Je Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, we remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread and after giving the thanks, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, gave it to them and said, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The juice and the wafers that we share today, we do so in remembrance of Jesus Christ. And let us join together in the prayer of consecration. Lord, we pray that this bread, this cup, and our lives are blessed by the wind of your spirit which makes the ordinary things extraordinary. How amazing. Amen. And at this time, I invite the communion servers to come forward. And friends, in just a moment, I will invite you to come forward too. There are three communion stations, one right here in the center, one to my right, one to my left. So you can come down the center aisle or you can use the sides and go to one of the side stations. We will give you a uh, package of communion elements with a wafer and juice. Peel the top off of the wafer, take the wafer and eat it, and then peel the top off of the juice, take the juice and drink it. And then there are places on the sides to dispose of that packaging and return to your seats for the conclusion of our service. If you prefer, raise your hand and we have a communion servers roaming that will be glad to bring the elements to you where you are sitting. Everybody, please watch your step as you come forward as well. Just as the resurrection of Jesus Christ is good news for all people, all are welcome at the table. body of Christ given for you. The cup of new life poured out for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are ready. <laughs>
Let us join together in the prayer of thanksgiving as printed in the bulletin. Yes, we give thanks to you for this meal and for all blessings. You are the source of life for all creation, and you have made us in your own image. In your love for us, you sent your Son to be our Savior. He suffered death on the cross. Now you have raised him in triumph and exalted him in glory. In his name, send us to proclaim the good news. He lives. Amen. And I invite all who are able to rise for our closing hymn, He Lives, printed in the bulletin. brief announcements in our benediction. I want to thank you all for being here this Easter morning so that we could worship together on behalf of all of us at United Church of Sun City. It's been our great honor to lead this service. Please know you are welcome to join us at United Church for worship each Sunday morning, 10 a.m. All are welcome. As you depart this morning, our ushers will be holding baskets. If you're so inclined, please leave an offering with all of the proceeds going to Soldier's Best Friend, an organization very near to us in Peoria that trains service animals for veterans, a ver very worthy cause. That's Soldier's Best Friend, and 100% of our offering will go to them. Now hear these words. Yes, go forth this Easter morning and spread the good, good news. Jesus lives. Blessed by God's Holy Spirit in this place of worship. Go forth. Amen and amen. Happy Easter.
Thank you.